So, we talked about the mechanism of currents across the two junctions in a transistor. Let me recapitulate. We had this uh, transistor in common emitter mode NPN transistor. I am talking in terms of NPN transistor, but I have repeatedly told that you can use the same language, the same story with uh, PNP transistor. All the arrows are to be inverted and the battery terminals are to be inverted and electron becomes whole, whole becomes uh, electron in that uh, description. Okay. So, in normal operations, this is important. In normal operations, this uh, base emitter junction, this is forward biased. Whereas, this uh, collector base, this junction is reverse biased. So, this is uh, an important thing to remember that it happens like this. And then uh, the biasing is according to this description. This is your emitter, this is your base, this is P, this is N. Right, this is n, this is p and this is n. So, your biasing has to be this way. This p should go to positive and this emitter is uh, common and from collector side also you have resistance and then you have biasing. So, this is now reversed bias. So, what happens because of this forward bias? lot of electrons are injected from the emitter into the base because this is heavy, heavily doped. So, because of that large concentration, you have uh, this carrier injection is also large and those things go here and this reverse bias, this reverse bias junction that draws those electrons because that is a minority carrier here and reverse bias attracts minority carriers and so, a lot of electrons uh, from this go through this collector circuit and some small fraction goes through this and that corresponds to the recombination of Holtz electrons once these electrons find themselves in this P region. So, this was the mechanism and under that you understand that I C is less than but close to this I E. The currents are this is I E that corresponds to the number of electrons which are being injected from this N side to this P side. So, electrons are going this way and therefore, the current is this way. Then uh, I C is this, this is I C because the electrons are being uh, attracted by this uh, reverse bias and so, electrons are going this way and so, the current is this way and the electrons which are going in this direction that constitute this current I B. So, this I C is slightly smaller than I E and if we compare this I C with this I B, this I C is much, much larger than I B. So, we normally treat this as the input side and this as the output side. So, you have uh, this input current I B and output current I C and the current is is mag magnified current is uh, increased by a, a large factor. Typically, typically if uh, everything is fine, everything is fine means this junction is uh, forward biased and this junction is reversed bias and that reverse bias uh, is uh, of uh, sufficient magnitude and this forward bias is sufficient magnitude. So, if this whole operation that I have told that uh, only because of the recombination some electrons are going this side, but most of them are going this side, the biasing is such. Okay. In that case, this ratio I C by I B, this ratio, this is fixed, this is fixed. It depends on the concentrations of those impurities, it depends on the geometrical parameters, you know the base is very, very thin and all that. So, it depends on all, the, all those things. But once those things are there, when the transistor is there and then uh, the biasing is also proper, right. 
so that uh, this mechanism does take place then this IC by IB known as beta this uh, is constant over a, a fairly good range. So, this is known as, uh, IC, as beta and sometimes it is written beta DC because we are just uh, taking the ratio of IC and IB most of the time people are interested in small changes. So, if there is a small change in IB what will be the change in IC. So, you can define uh, delta IC over delta IB also and that will be written as beta AC, but not much difference beta DC, beta AC are almost the same and so if you just uh, call it beta uh, it is fine. You can also take the ratio of this IC and IE in terms of beta you know this uh, IE is IB and plus IC. Right. From here you can see Kirchhoff law you can apply here. You have uh, IB going this way and then IC going this way. All this current that IB is here it has to come from this wire only and all the current that IC is here must come from this wire only and so you have uh, this relation and then uh, if you write uh, this uh, IE is uh, from here. From here if you take this uh, IB as IC divided by beta. So, this will be IC divided by beta and plus IC. So, it is IC common 1 plus beta over beta and hence you have IC over IE another useful parameter. What fraction of a emitter, emitter current is going through the collector part? So, that is this fraction. So, this fraction is beta over 1 by 1 plus beta and this is known as alpha this is written as alpha. So, alpha tells you what fraction of emitter current goes through the collector whereas, beta tells you what is the current ratio between this output collector current and this input base current. Okay. And typically, typically this beta will be uh, something like uh, let us say 20 to 200 or or of, of that type 50, 100 is quite common and correspondingly you can see what is alpha 0 0.98, 0 0.99 uh, like that. So, it, this will be a number close to 1, close to 1 0 0.98, 0 0.99, 0 0.995 or 0 0.985 like that whereas, that will be a, a big number 50, 70, 200, 100 like that. So, that is alpha and beta. Now, this, uh, this zone, this normal operation or the whole this mechanism, uh, when this is this, these conditions are met, we say that the transistor is in active region. Okay, we say that transistor is in active region. So, this is the name given active region. So, in active region your uh, this uh, base uh, emitter junction is uh, uh, properly forward biased and this collector base junction is properly reversed biased. So, that uh, it uh, it is ready to receive all those electrons which are coming from the emitter to the base uh, with this fraction of course, this fraction. So, with that uh, it is ready. If, if the forward biasing of base emitter junction is not proper, very small biasing or no biasing, zero potential difference, then what happens? If you do not bias for example, do not bias this p n junction, just uh, leave it open or give it a very small voltage. So, then what will happen? So, you know the this p n junction will not uh, be operating and this uh, v i characteristics you know v i characteristics. So, you need a small voltage after that the current starts. So, if this is not sufficiently forward biased then nothing will operate no electrons will be injected here and if no electrons are injected here no question of any uh, collector current. So, this uh, is also it is called 
and it is used in fact. It looks very trivial to talk, but uh, this is used in certain applications. This is known as a cutoff region. Okay. So, cutoff region means no current, I c is 0 and here I c is beta times I b. And there is one more important region and that is when the base emitter junction is followed by us properly. So, you do have a, a large number of electrons going into the base correspondingly there is an I b, but the collector base junction is not sufficiently reversed bias. Okay? If uh, you apply some say 5 volts, 10 volts, 8 volts at this collector base junction, good. So, whatever electrons are coming correspondingly that alpha factor is there. So, that alpha times uh, those are drawn into the collector, but what if the biasing of this collector base junction is, is very small, is weakened. We apply a, a small VCC here, this is VCC remember, this is VCC. So, if there is a current here, you have VCC, there is a drop, voltage drop here. So, finally, the voltage from here to here may be, this voltage may be small, right. If uh, you have a good amount of I b and suppose beta times I b is I c. So, that much current is going from here. So, you do have a potential drop here. So, the potential between this c and e v c e that will be v c c here and minus this if you call it r l minus r l times I c. So, at a certain in, in certain situations it may so happen that uh, the this current I c is large and this drop V c e is small because of this and if this V c e is small remember you also have a drop here. So, your uh, this p n junction this base collector junction has to be reversed bias. So, it should be more than this voltage and this voltage is more than this voltage and therefore, uh, this difference should be this uh, one and plus this reverse bias. So, if uh, this V c e becomes a small, then this base collector junction may be hardly reversed bias or zero bias or in certain conditions may be forward biased. In that case, this mechanism will not work and then uh, this uh, beta times I b, I c equal to beta times I b, this relation this relation here, this relation, this will not hold because the collector does not have capability of drawing these many electrons, right. These many electrons it cannot draw and therefore, uh, we say that it is saturated, the transistor is saturated, the collector efficiency of drawing electrons from the base in the case of NPN transistor it is saturated, it cannot draw anymore. If you increase I b, proportionately I c will not increase because the collector is not ready to receive all those electrons, draw all these electrons. So, if that happens, that is known as saturation. region. So, these are uh, three important uh, uh, regions, regions in the sense what uh, kind of currents are here, what kind of voltages are here, what is V c c, what is V, this is V b b. So, what is V b b, what resistance is here, what resistance here. So, these things will decide whether we are in active zone, where uh, both the junctions are, are ok and then uh, our relation, this relation takes place. And uh, then we have this uh, cutoff region where uh, the forward biasing of uh, base emitter itself is weak and therefore, nothing is happening that is cut, cut off. And then we have this saturation region where you have current, current is there, the, the, this current is there, is active, the transistor is active. But then uh, the capability is saturated, capability of drawing more electrons here is saturated. In that case, 
this uh, IC will be smaller than this beta times IB. And if you increase IB, if you increase IB, this collector is not uh, ready to respond. So, uh, you do have a some kind of a constant current after that. So, this is uh, these are the regions. So, let us uh, now take up what we call transistor characteristics. Characteristics, uh, you know, for PN junction, you draw that IV characteristics like this, okay, IV characteristics. for p n junction just one p single p n junction if this is i and this is v what v which v if you have a p n junction forward bias and we apply a v here so which v i am plotting here it is the potential difference across the p n junction not this v right not the battery voltage that we are applying not that vcc vbb not that across the junction so if uh, if this is v and this is i in forward bias this kind of characteristic is is shown in in the case of pn junction for uh, transistor circuit also Here I have two p-n junctions and therefore two junction voltages and two currents. So, there are, there are various combinations possible. In p-n junction there was only just one combination V and I. So, if I have this transistor, And then I have this input side, this output side, then this is base and this is emitter and you have VBE, the junction potential difference, the voltage across the junction, we write VBE. So, VBE if I write here and then the current IB which is, uh, which is there, this is current IB. So, if this is current IB, it, it will look like this it will almost look like this. If this junction was not there, of course, this is a p n junction and it should be this characteristic. What is the effect of this uh, collector here? The electrons which are coming only a small fraction is going, okay? a small fraction is going. So, in a, if this collector was not there, perhaps this would have been in milli amperes. But since the collector is there and it is drawing a large fraction of electrons on that side, so this current will be reduced. So, the, the difference will be that uh, the scale here still can be in micro amperes. In a normal p n junction like this, when we draw forward bias, we write in milli amperes. If I reverse it, reverse bias, then on this side we have in uh, micro amperes, on this side, the scale on this side we draw in micro amperes, this side we draw in, uh, in milli amperes. But in this case, the shape will be the same, but the, the values will be different. And this is of course the same, uh, 1, 2, whatever, 1 volt, 2 volt. If it is silicon, you know, 0.6 is the 0 0.6, 0 0.7 volt is that uh, barrier and so it cannot exceed that. So, this is the kind of characteristics. This is known as input characteristic. This is known as input characteristics because this whole side is called input side and IB is uh, the current on the input side, VB is the potential difference on this input side. So, this characteristic is known as the input characteristic you also have output characteristic and what will be that? Current is IC and then uh, this VCE, VCE, this V and this E. Since we are controlling this potential difference, uh, we are not writing VCB, 
we are writing V C E. So, if you draw curves of this I C collector current and uh, here you have uh, V C E. By the way, in this uh, particular case, V C E constant. So, this is constant and for that uh, you may have to adjust this V C C E because if current is changing then this drop is changing and if you want to keep this uh, V C E constant you have to adjust this V C C here, here. If the output characteristic I B is kept constant for one particular curve there will be one I B and to keep the, this I B same, we are now changing this V C E. So, uh, maybe we will have to readjust this V B B, but not really much. Okay, so, let me start with a good amount of this uh, V C E here and let us say something around 5 volts or 6 volts or like that. So, if this is let us say 5 volts. So, I am in the active region, I want to be in the active region, right? Cutoff region there is no characteristics. So, active region, in active region what will happen? The collector base junction is sufficiently reversed bias, so that uh, it draws that uh, beta times uh, uh, that current I B. So, it is drawing this much of current, let us say, or oh, I have to draw more characteristics. So, let us say this one here this much, this is the IC, this is the value of IC. What if I make this 5 volt 6 volts? If I increase this uh, biasing here, so that this VCE increases, so it is more reversed bias, what will happen to the current? Since I said that is already in the, in the right region, it is not in saturation or, or like that. So, it is drawing maximum number of electrons that it is supposed to do for a given IB. For a given IB, uh, suppose beta times uh, IB should be IC and it is doing that. That means, all the electrons which are being injected here, right, that fraction beta is taken up by the collector and it is it's reverse bias, sufficiently reverse bias. If you increase more, nothing will happen because it is uh, it's drawing the maximum number of, of electrons for which this is, is made. So, just like in reverse bias in uh, this junction single p n junction also in the reverse bias the current does not change unless you come to the breakdown as you increase that reverse biasing. Why? Because you have uh, that potential slide and then uh, the electrons which are here they are taken up in this side by the electric field. So, whether the it is this much or it is this much does not matter, does not matter. So, the current only depends on how many electrons are available for uh, this drift uh, in accordance with the electric field. So, that decides the current. Similarly, here if I increase the reverse bias, it is already drawing whatever is available and therefore, not much uh, will change and this will be almost a flat line on this side. And if you reduce this reverse bias, if reduce this V C C, if you reduce this V C E and you reduce this V C B, see if this is reduced, then uh, at a certain stage it may not be able to draw beta times I B current, because it may not be able to draw that fraction of electrons into it. The reverse biasing is not strong enough, there are too many electrons and this uh, small electric field which is there is not able to draw it uh, properly and that is a saturation region and in that case the current will drop. So, in that case the current will drop. If uh, V C E is 0, suppose V C E is 0, suppose this is forward bias, fine, it is going here, electrons are being injected here, but suppose this is 0, what will happen? If this is 0, V C E 0, then V C B will be positive, 
forward biased because remember this p this is n and this is p and this is n and this junction is forward biased so with respect to this it is at a positive voltage so with respect to this if this is zero then with respect to base this is also positive and so you don't have reverse bias you have in fact uh, forward bias and it will not draw electrons from there and these are lightly doped they themselves are not going to give uh, sufficient uh, significant current so this will be almost zero here and if this is not zero but small if this is not zero but small then uh, you will have a very small uh, small forward bias to start with and this forward biasing will be decreased if this this potential is same as this potential vce is zero then i said that this is forward biased because uh, this is uh, forward bias so from here these two are at the same potential so it is more potential than this and also more potential than this so p in this junction is forward biased if you slightly increase this vce then the forward biasing will be reduced and uh, at some point 1 volt point 2 volt this will become zero and after that it will become reverse bias slightly reverse bias and then the reverse bias will increase so what do you expect the current will be zero here and then it will slowly increase and then when the this uh, potential reverse biasing is sufficient then it will join here so this will be the kind of characteristic and what if i increase ib if i increase ib if you are in this region this is the active region where it is flat this is active region you have sufficient reverse biasing here and of course sufficient forward biasing is is there that is why you have uh, uh, this so if you go for a higher ib then this side will be all right since it is at 5 volt it is ready to accept even more electrons so uh, that same fraction beta will be maintained and you will have a current like this and once again now you have a larger current so if it saturated here it will saturate slightly shifted here okay because you have more number of electrons to draw them you you need a little more reverse biasing so this will be shifted here and it will look like this it will look like this if you further increase ib it will go like this okay so this is the saturation region this region this region is saturation region this is saturation this region this region this is saturation region this region this region is saturation region and uh, this is active region this is active this is active region no problem so this is known as output characteristics vce output side voltage on output side and ic current on output side so this is known as output characteristics you have uh, you can have more characteristics you can take one parameter from input side another parameter from output side and then draw the curve so if you do that kind of things you get uh, more characteristics and collectively we call them transfer characteristics there may be many many combinations we will perhaps uh, talk uh, one of the transfer characteristics in the next lectures and then we will go for some applications